Hello and welcome. Uh, this video is going to walk you through activity 9.6. Now before we start talking about the activity, I want to make sure you have the right data file. It's a little bit different than what we've typically done. So you want to click on data files on the uh, Blackboard page and that'll bring you to this Google Drive. Go to chapter 9 and then it's actually in a folder all to itself because there's quite a bit of information here. Uh, so you want to click on this folder and then there's all of this information that we need. Uh, the, the two data files you need are right here. Uh, this is the first one we'll use and then uh, we'll be using this one second. But if you want to get both of them loaded up, that would just be fine. The other thing you want to have available to you is this file right here, which I have already downloaded right here. This is an actual uh, published article uh, that is replicating a very famous study on social facilitation that was conducted in 1969. Um, and uh, this study was published in 2020. So it's a very recent article. And uh, as again, it repl replicated this very famous study in social psychology uh, that uh, studied something called social facilitation. So I want to describe for you in a nutshell what social facilitation is all about. Uh, if you're really, uh, well, I'm not going to say if you're really interested. This article is only six pages long. And I think you're going to get the most out of today's activity if you actually read parts of this. Um, I would encourage you to um, read the uh, introduction here, which is just a page and a half, and then the method section here, which is another page. Uh, you're going to recognize some things that we've mentioned in class, and I think it's always helpful to see that, gee, you're learning things that actually people use. Researchers really use the things that we're talking about in class and they write about it in the way that we write about it in here. So uh, I'd encourage you to do that. Um, you're going to get the most out of it if you if you do that. Um, to be 100% honest with you, you probably don't have to read every single bit of this article, even though it's only six pages. Um, but I think you'll, um, it'll be reinforcing, I think, if you see um, that how much you've learned, how you can actually read uh, an actual research article. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about social facilitation. Uh, and I have a little um, guide here for us. So social facilitation theory, uh, there's a, a theory out there that said um, and having performing a task in front of an audience will have an interactive and moderating effect, an interaction effect on performance, depending on the task difficulty. So as it says here, this scientific hypothesis, the, the hypothesis here is consistent with social facilitation theory. Uh, having an audience will increase your performance on a task if that task is simple. So having an audience present is going to increase your performance on a simple task, but it will hinder your performance on a difficult task. Uh, that is, that's social facilitation theory. And so this study that we're gonna do here, or the, that we're gonna talk about here, is uh, doing a two by two where task difficulty is the first factor and it has two levels. The task is either simple or difficult. And the other factor is whether an audience is present or absent. So we have a two by two here. And um, it might, you might be surprised to know that the study is on cockroaches. Uh, where. The, the participants were actual cockroaches and they they ran a maze and the maze was either a simple maze which was basically just a straight line a path really or a quote difficult 
maze where they had to go in and take a turn. Okay, so it wasn't really that difficult a maze, but it was more difficult than walking a straight line. Uh, and then they had a, an audience um, that was present around, and the audience was other cockroaches. Uh, now, I know this seems really, I don't know, I, I think it's kind of funny, but it's a very famous study in social psychology. Um, and if you go to um, this folder here, we actually have some video of the actual cockroaches performing the task. So I'm going to show you those just for, it'll just take a few seconds here. So here's, here's the maze. I'm going to pause this so I can describe it for you. Here is the maze. Okay. And eventually uh, the cockroach is going to walk down this path here and make a turn. So this would be the difficult task. And obviously there's an audience of cockroaches present. This is a apparatus where they can see the, the cockroaches can see the subject cockroach, but they can't smell because it's hermetically sealed. It's, it's, um, they can't, there's no pheromones or anything going on here. They did, uh, you'll read about it in, uh, in the methodology section. So anyway, let's watch this cockroach perform this task. This would be the difficult task with an audience. Okay, so that was, um, and then I didn't mention this, but the dependent variable is how long it takes the cockroach to uh, leave the uh, starting point and get to the goal box over there. So the, the, just the reaction time or, or completion time is the dependent variable. So now let's go ahead and watch a different condition. This is the same condition, but without an audience. Cockroaches do not like light, so they open this box and they're in a light lit room, and so they want to go to the darkness, and that's why they're going to this area over here because they can see that that area is dark. A little sluggish here. Okay. And then let's uh, do the simple task with an audience present. So we don't, I'm going to speed this up a little bit. This cockroach is a little reluctant to leave. We don't need to watch a full minute of this. Speeding it up just a little bit. Come on, buddy. Let's go. There we go. Okay. And the, the, this is the simple task because it doesn't need to do a turn. They're just walking straight across. And of course, the audience is present. All right. And then the last one is kind of the same thing, but this one goes quickly. Um, open up the starting box, off to the races. Simple task, no audience. Okay, so in the study that we're going to be analyzing the data from, and we're using the actual data from this study, they had 120 cockroaches perform this task. Um, uh, one of these different tasks. Again, this is, there's four different conditions, as I've just described, uh, as is described here, right? So the simple task with the audience present or absent, and then the difficult task with the audience present or absent. Okay. Um, and so now what we need to do is I can just walk us through the uh, activity. 
And let's see here, let me get out of this. Okay, so here is activity six, three, or excuse me, six, uh, excuse me, nine, six, activity nine, six. And um, I've already described for you the uh, task and uh, the different conditions. So I've already answered the first question. Um, I should mention the, the way you're going to get the best out of the most out of this activity is if you try to answer these questions on your own, just don't copy down when I say the right answer. Um, so what I would encourage you to do is pause now and try to answer uh, questions uh, one and two and really three as well. And then I'll um, show you how to do some of stuff for Jamov. So go ahead and pause the video, try and answer those questions. Okay, so uh, hopefully you were successful. Um, what's the independent variable? What are the independent variables? Well, it's um, task difficulty and the presence or absence of a audience are the two independent variables. And the dependent variable is uh, time to complete the task, D. And then um, which the three effects are most directly tested by this. So um, th th we're trying to find out um, whether there's evidence for social, social facilitation theory. And that was the idea that um, the type of uh, whether or not the audience is present, does that, does that help or hurt performance? And the prediction was that it would help performance in a simple task, but it would hinder performance in a difficult task. So that's an interaction. So the real, um, the, the three F tests that we're gonna get, the three uh, omnibus Fs, the one that we're most interested in is this interaction one. Having said that, we're gonna um, first start off with the main effects this time for reasons that uh, might become apparent a little later. So, um, I did provide the data file and we've got it loaded right here. Let's see here. I think, uh, nope, I don't want to use that one first. I want to use this one first. Um, so make sure you open this data file and you have this one open first. We want to do our labels, of course. So task difficulty or the task one is simple. Two is difficult. And then audience, uh, one is alone. And two is with an audience. Okay. Um, and apparently all of these different cockroaches had their own name, which is kind of interesting as well. All right, and then this is our dependent variable here. Uh, we want to, um, the first task is asking us to uh, find the means and stuff that we need to do for the main effect of, let's see, for the main effect of difficulty, but before we, um, I think I'm just going to run all of the analysis all at once, just to speed things up here a little bit. So we'll go to uh, ANOVA and ANOVA. Uh, our dependent variable is the amount of time or reaction time here goes there, and then um, task and audience we have right as our factors, um, and Interestingly, so what we're going to do is we're going to compare the results that we get to the results that they report in the article uh, that, that we'll show. Now, in the article, they got partial eta squared as their effect size rather than omega squared. So let's go ahead and get both of them. Uh, so 
We don't usually use partial, but I want to show you some things with that, so we will do that. Um, you also want to do um, post hocs just because I want to. Might as well get Cohen's D and you know get all the stuff that we always get here. Um, always helpful to get graphs. Main effect of task, main effect of audience graph. Now we want the interaction graph. Get both of them in there. Make sure you remember to click marginal means. That'll be important. Um, all right, so I think we have everything we need for the first several questions here. So um, here we're ready to answer this question. So which two means are being compared for the main effect of difficulty? The main effect of task difficulty, I should say. Uh, so you want to find that. So again, pause the video, see if you can find it. Here is our output for the main effect of task difficulty. Um, we want to go down to here, and here are our two means. So this is the um, time that it took them to complete the the average time it took them to complete the task uh, in the simple task and difficult task. You want to find all of the F and um, all, all of the statistical information again. So you want to go up to way up to the top here and here it is. I'm not going to read them off to you. You can find it, right? Um, you're going to want to use the, all the stuff in the task line and here's your means Here's the second DF and your mean square error. Oh, yeah. Um, and let's see here. Next thing we want to do is um, if you, um, you want to find the part of the results section, question six, you want to find the part of the results section in the actual article here. Find the part of the results section where they report the main effect of task difficulty. So we did all the method. Hopefully you took a chance to read it. The results section here is only three paragraphs, okay? That's it. That's it. Because it's just a real simple one-way ANOVA so, or two-way ANOVA. So um, here's where they're going to start talking about the results, right? Um, our data show that the cockroaches needed more time to complete the maze, which is the more difficult task, uh, compared to the easier one-way, run-way task. And then they're reporting the means and standard deviations, which are exactly like the ones that we got. Then they're reporting the F information, exactly the same way we have learned to do it, right? With one exception they left out something, right? What did they leave out? Pause so you can find it. Um, what they left out was the mean square error. Um, it's, it's encouraged that people report that, but lots of times people don't. Um, the researcher reported partial a squared rather than omega squared. Um, and uh, seven asks you which one gives you a higher estimate. Well, let's go back and look at the data. Um, here is partial a squared for task, which is about 0.12, and here is uh, omega squared. Partial a squared is always going to give you a bigger number. Again, it tends to overestimate things. That's why we like to use omega squared. But you can use partial a squared. It's commonly done, uh, and they did, and there's nothing wrong with that. You just got to remember that it, it will tend to overestimate. And that's the answer to number, to number eight, right? All right, and now the difficult one. Um, choose the best summary for the main effect of task difficulty. So again, here is task difficulty. You're trying to find the words that describe this, right? Um, we haven't really talked about the p-value for the main effect of task difficulty, but it's small, it's compelling, which is, again, what you'd expect given this graph. There's no overlap. So which of these 
um, A through D is the best answer for this. Again, pause the video uh, and make your choice. So clearly it's the case that uh, the rat or the rats, the, the roaches did better in the difficult condition, or excuse me, they did worse in the difficult condition. Again, this is measuring time. So a lower bar, a lower point is better performance. So they did better in, a, in the simple task, the runway, than they did um, the maze. It took them longer to, to, do, to navigate the turn than it did to just run down the runway. So you want to find the task that, or A through D that says that. So it looks like A, cockroaches in the population would probably complete the runway task better. And that's what the simple runway task was. Okay, now we want to look at the main effect for audience and find the uh, means that we are doing for audience. So we can find those right down under here, of course. And then you want to find the all the statistical information for that. Of course, you find the main effect for audience up here, and you can find all of the numbers that you need, of course. And now you want to choose the best summary for that. So again, pause the video and choose the best summary. Again, for audience, looks like we have a very compelling p-value here. Um, and then you want to come down and find the results that kind of describe this. Again, a higher value is worse performance. So we want to find the uh, description that does that. So we want to find the uh, words that describe this picture, the, the main test, the main effect of audience. So we want to find the words that describe the idea that um, people performed better, people, the rodents, the, the rodents, the, the roaches performed better alone compared to when they were being watched. Uh, and so that would be, uh, I guess, C, right? Okay, so now um, we want to do the, the main question, the interaction. That's the one that is the most directly related to uh, the reason why we're doing the study. Do we have support for the social facilitation idea that having an audience facilitates performance in a simple task, but it hinders performance in a difficult task? Um, well, even though the activity doesn't ask you to do this, I always think it's a good idea to go look at the graph. Look at this graph. Again, support for an interaction, which is what social facilitation theory is saying. It's predicting an interaction. You're going to have one story to tell for simple tasks and a different story to tell for difficult tasks. And that's another way of saying is you're looking for non-parallel lines that I'm expecting a high p-value for this um, interaction because um, these things look pretty parallel, right? Um, there's not a different story to tell. It looks like for the simple task, people did better. Okay, so um, now we should look and find the uh, actual numbers that which you need for 13. So we need those right here, right? So we can find those, and then here's our p-value. Again, we were expecting a large p-value, and that's exactly what we got. Uh, so it's, um, I'll help you out with this. It's going to be 1 and 116 in the parentheses, and then the f is very small, right? And then there's the p, uh, and then the mean square error is right there, and then, of course, um, report um, partial a to squared right there, because that's what they wanted. And what does this analysis suggest about the interaction? Um, again, pause and pick between one of those two. It seems to be very likely that this is due to sampling error because this is a very um, large p-value. So in other words, 
any differences that exist between the slope of this line and the slope of that line is probably just due to sampling error. Um, and yeah. Uh, so how large is the effect? Well, you can go up here to the partially a squared. Very small, tiny. Okay. Now, um, in the actual article, they report, let's go to that article real quick. In the actual article, they report the simple effects analysis, but they do it in a slightly different way than we have been doing it. But it's, again, there are more than one way of doing things. Um, they describe um, what's going on for a complex task, and they analyze the data with a t-test, a student's t-test. So they have a sentence where they're describing what's going on for a complex task. And then they also then describe, I guess it's the same sentence, but then they then also describe what's going on for a simple task, right? And here are the results they got, right? Let's see if we can duplicate their results and then interpret them and see how they interpreted them. Uh, oh, and then finally down here, they do report the interaction right here. And you'll notice if you look at the results they report here, they are exactly the same ones that we got. Okay, got the same P value, same F, all of that. We're doing the same things. Um, they reported the simple effects analysis first, which is a way to do it. Um, but we will um, sort of rep we want to replicate the way they did their results as well. So we're going to do that now. Um, we need a different data file for this uh, because of the way they analyzed it. They're, they didn't use um, what we did when we analyzed these things. We, we use the ANOVA provided simple effects analysis. They instead chose to go back and use t-tests, the same t-tests that we used in chapter seven, an independent sample t-test to compare audience present versus audience absent for the simple task. And then they also did a separate t-test to compare audience present and audience, audience absent for the difficult task. And these are essentially the simple effects. And this is a way you can do it. So let's go ahead and label it. So audience one is alone. And audience two is an audience. And we use those same labels for the other tasks. So one is still alone. Again, we're going to be using two separate t-tests here. One for each simple effect. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do an independent samples t-test right here. And our grouping variable is going to be audience um, for the easy task. And then we're going to put in our dependent variable there. And then we got results. Oh, and we want to get all of this information, just like we've done before. OK. And um, that's one t-test. Now we want to do the other t-test. So let's go here, independent t-test again. And now we want to use um, the difficult audience grouping variable and then difficult task time there. And then we want to get all of this information. Now what I'd like you to do is, after you do that, look at the data that you got. You have two t-tests here, right? You have a, um, the t-test for when the task is difficult, difficult time task, alone versus audience, and then you have the easy time task, easy task time. Um, and I want you to compare the results that you got here, your t, your p, all of these statistics that we report to what they report right here in the results section. Here's where they report what's going on for the difficult task. 
And then the second part of that sentence, that's where they're reporting what's going on with the um, simple task. Difficult task, simple task. Those two simple effects right there. So with that information, you should be able to fill out uh, question 16. Um, I won't walk you through that. You can find those on your own. They're all provided. And then um, for 17, the question, you can answer this by looking at the data they provide, because um, it's pretty straightforward here. Um, look at the data uh, and determine which group has the most variability. Well, so which of these graphs look like it has the most variability? Again, these whiskers provide um, the 95% conference interval around things. So um, that is what you are should be looking at. And so clearly, I'll let you pick which one, pause, and then come back for the answer. The answer is this one, of course. It's the um, most variability. So this is running time, right? Look at how, how compressed it is here and how it's getting a little more variable all the way through. OK, now you want to do 18. What do the simple effects simple effects analysis suggest? Well, again, the simple effects analysis, if you go back to the way we did our simple effects analysis, is we did two independent t-tests. In order to have an interaction, you want to have a different story to tell for the simple task versus the difficult task. Well, the simple task said we have very compelling evidence that people did better when they were alone than when they had an audience watching. And I keep saying people, but these are roaches. Um, roaches did better when they were alone because, again, we're this is time, so a, a smaller number is better. Did quite a bit better alone than with an audience. Okay. Um, now, for a difficult task, again, we have compelling evidence, and we have the same pattern of data, right? So this, we have the same story to tell for the difficult task and the easy task. And again, we kind of knew that when we looked at the um, interaction graph from the previous output. Uh, when we looked at this interaction graph, that's kind of what we said, right? We have the same story here and the same story there. Again, they just analyzed the data in a slightly different way, but they got to the same answer, which is, which is common. There's often more than one way of doing things. So um, number 18, what do the simple effects suggest? The, the presence of the audience had similar effects on the simple and difficult tasks. So that's A. Do the research results of the interaction and simple, what do they, what do they suggest? Um, do these support social facilitation or not? Again, I'll let you pause. And so the social facilitation um, theory predicted that you would have different stories. You would have an interaction. And of course we don't. So um, answer is A, we do not support uh, social facilitation. And then um, now these last two questions I'm going to have you um, answer on your own. I'm going to ask you to read the discussion section of the paper. It's only a page long. And then um, much like what we do when we um, talk about our little activities in class, we talk about, OK, think about the methodological flaws. Think about how, there was, um, how you would interpret these results. How do they relate to the scientific literature? They did all of those things in their one page short uh, discussion section. So again, the way we're teaching you to do things is the way people actually do it. So I would like you to read the discussion and see if you can find the answers to 20 and 21. OK. Uh, and if you, obviously, if you have any questions, we can go over this on the next time I see you in class. Thanks for following along. And I'll see you later.